Welcome back to the Everyday Disciple Life. I am so excited to have my friend Violet with us today. Violet is the founder and CEO of Breaking Through the Lies, LLC. She is a life and freedom coach and speaker. Her passion is to see every follower of Jesus Christ walking in the freedom he died to give them. Violet became a believer and follower of Jesus at a very young age, but spent many years in the grip of fear, worry, guilt, shame, and even at times suicidal thoughts. She knew that this did not match the promises in God's word about who she was in Christ, but she felt trapped in her own mind. Through her own struggles to experience that true freedom, she learned the importance of words, taking our thoughts captive, renewing the mind and inner healing. Having been set free, it is now her mission to help others walk in their true identity in Christ so that they too can live lives of joy, peace, love, abundance, and fulfill the destiny that God has for them. She is a widow, a mother of two sons, has three granddaughters, and is awaiting the arrival of her very first grandson in a few months. She loves waterfalls, eagles, butterflies, hiking, and sitting in her paddle boat on their small pond and reading. Violet, thank you so much for being here. Hey, I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Well, you and I have talked about this before. We we're just so in sync. We're going to have so much fun today, but I, (laughs) I want to give you the opportunity to kind of share a little bit of your story. Um, why is it so important to you that Christians identify and break through any lies that we might be believing? Why did that become so important to you? Well, I think there are are actually, there's several reasons. And one of the big ones for me was that, um, one, one lie that I was believing is I was believing a lie about God, the father, and that kept me from getting close to him. And so, you know, that, that's a big one. That's, that's very important (laughs) to be able to get close to God. Um, so that's one reason. And, you know, it's because they can hinder us from, you know, from having that close intimate relationship, you know, with him. Um, but also, you know, lies can keep us from believing that God will or even wants to use us and to expand, you know, his kingdom. So we all, you know, we're all designed and created for purpose. He tells us that we're created for purpose. But when we're believing lies, you know, a lot of times that's hindering us from fulfilling that purpose. And maybe we'll never fulfill that purpose because of, because of those lies. And so, and then I think another one is that a big lies keep us trapped. Like you mentioned, like I told you that I was, I was trapped in that fear and the guilt and the shame and, you know, depression and, you know, those feelings of just, you know, suicidal thoughts, but, and those things, they steal us from the Lord, the love, the joy, the peace, all the things that Jesus came to give us and he, that he died to give us that are ours, but you know, they get stolen because of lies. Mm. You know, it's so interesting that you started with the lie about, um, you know, you were believing a lie about God, the father. And I I believe it was a W Tozer that said, when we put God in his rightful place, a thousand problems are solved, you know, like, that is the the biggest foundation right there. Whenever we believe who God says he is, that just changes everything. Um, so was that probably the, the biggest lie that you were believing? Like the, the springboard, I guess, for the others? Yes, because again, you know, if you can't believe he is who he is or that he has your best interest or that he really loves you, you know, you can read it all the time. You know, it says, you know, for God so loved the world and, you know, it talks about his love, but if you are believing something that is keeping you from really believing and receiving that, then that, that just messes up everything else. And so I needed to get past, I needed to get past that lie. And because the other thing is, you know, as as lies are brought up and as I'm, you know, learning what lies I am even believing, you know, if I can't believe him in the first place, then I would look at those things that maybe he, that he wanted to get rid of and get out of me. But instead of looking at them from a loving place, they would be more condemning 
and he doesn't condemn. Oh my goodness. I mean, that is such truth right there. Just, I love that you mentioned he doesn't condemn that his voice is a loving voice. And the voice of the enemy is that condemning, um, condemning voice, which I, I like to teach my youth group that conviction is specific. Conviction is about a specific behavior or idea or something like that. And it's calling to you as opposed to the enemy, that condemnation is you're such a loser. Why would anybody want to hear from you and pushes down? And so, um, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So do you mind sharing with us a couple of ways that these lies impacted your life? Well, one of the ways, I guess a lot of them is one uh, part of the lies that I believed and was not just about the father, but that I wasn't wanted or wasn't needed or wasn't loved. And, you know, and the funny thing is, I mean, I knew my parents loved me and I didn't, you know, I didn't, I grew up in a good home. It wasn't, you know, I don't have the abuse or anything like that, but what I've learned is words just are so impactful and they attach themselves to different people, different times. You know, I might say something in a conversation and there'll be three people there and one, it doesn't do anything to one. It might hit a real pain point for them. It might trigger something, you know, and it may be something totally different to somebody else. And so growing up, believing the lies that you're not wanted and you're not needed and you're not loved. Well, one, I didn't have any self-confidence, you know, I lived in that fear all the time. And then, you know, even trying to really get close, you know, to your spouse or, you know, to that person that's going to be your spouse. And especially when they are and really even that trust there. So they can underlie, you know, they're underlying and they can undermine really every aspect. I think every aspect of your, you know, of your life, your whole perception is off. And so, and you're living and you're going through the way you're perceiving. And so it it affects everything really. Yeah. And you and I've kind of talked about this before, but you know, those emotions that feel like this is the truth when that definitely is the truth from our own perspective. Right. But it's not the truth as the heavenly father sees it. So we almost have to zoom out a little bit and look at it from the way he does to see the truth. Because um, like you, I was trapped in those feelings of I'm unlovable and I'm unwanted and I have nothing to offer. And um, the enemy kept my mouth shut for a very long time, very long time. And um, that's not what God wants from his people for his daughters. Oh my goodness. So how can we go about recognizing lies that we might be believing? Well, I think, and we touch on it a little bit, uh, I think, but one of the first things that we do, you know, one, we need to become mindful of what we're thinking, <laughs> you know, just really think about, okay, what, what am I thinking? What am I hearing? And then what am I saying? you know, even about ourselves, you know, and does what I'm hearing, what I'm saying, what I'm thinking, are those thoughts lining up with the word of God? Because when you're hearing those condemning thoughts, when you're hearing those thoughts that, you know, like you said, nobody wants to hear from you or, you know, whatever they are, that's not, when it's not lining up with God's word, it's a lie. And so, but we've got to become mindful. We really got to be, you know, thinking about what are we thinking about? (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And also, you know, looking at that second step, we have to be reading our word or we're not going to know if it lines up with God's word. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and and once, you know, and talk about that second step. So that's, you know, once we recognize it, then, you know, we want to replace it with the truth. And so you have to know the truth to replace it with the truth. And um, 
you know, I think it's very important to say, okay, recognize that lie and then really make that statement and make that determination of, you know, we use this big word called renounce, <laughs> but it's just, you know, declaring like I'm no more. I, I'm not believing that lie anymore. I recognize it's a lie and lie. I'm not believing you anymore. Satan, I'm not believing you anymore. That's not what my father says. That's mm -hmm. not the truth about me. And then we can start declaring then truth over us. And one way you're going to do that is you need those scriptures. You know, you need to go and find those scriptures and, you know, and keep repeating them, you know, like, no, this is why I am chosen. I have a purpose. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, God had works for me to do before I was even, you know, born and keep saying those. And, um, you know, there's a really good friend of mine that she does some of this as well, you know, works with mind and our thoughts. And, you know, she said there was a time for her. She kind of needed a bridge to get from what the truth said and what she could believe. And how she did that is, you know, she would say, God says I am such and such. God says. And so she said, because God said it, I'm going to believe it. So God, I'm believing what you said because you said it until she could get to the point of really believing it and receiving it. Absolutely. You know, and you, you and I've talked about this before, before we hit record, we've had some great conversations. So yes. <laughs> um, you and I've kind of talked about this before that knowing what the Bible says about us is vitally important, but even more important than that is knowing what the Bible says about God, because the more we know about him and his character, the more we trust him and the more we believe what his word says and the less room the enemy has to make us doubt. And, um, so that's, that's such a, such an important piece. I think if we jump straight into our own identity, I think it always feels a little lacking. Like th there's mm -hmm. no foundation. And so we need that foundation of knowing who God is. Yes. And I love what you said about, you know, we're going to just declare, I no longer believe this. I will not believe this lie. I'm going to focus and stand on the truth instead. That's biblical. Y'all resist the devil, draw near to the Lord. And the devil has no chance or no choice, but to flee from you. That's exactly what this is. I am no longer believing you. I am believing what God says about me instead. That's biblical that's spiritual warfare right there too. Yes. You know, and it, it is also in his word that tells us take every thought captive. Yeah. Take every thought captive. So he's telling us to take it captive. And he talks about renewing of our minds as well. Mm -hmm. So, and the more we do that, you know, I, I kind of think of it like this. There's only so much room, just take a glass, you know, take or take something and it's only got so much room in it. Well, if it's full of junk, it doesn't have room for the good stuff. And so you got to start getting the junk out in order to get the good and the real and the truth in. And then the more we do that, again, the easier it is to start recognizing, you know, what is the lies so that they don't come back in and you can say, nope. So we got to start, but we got to start doing that. So it sounds like to me, you just said, we're never going to be done with this. <laughs> that we're always <laughs> going to be having to pay attention to the lies that we ourselves or the enemy might try to have us uh, believe. Well, you know, we are in a fallen world and there's always going to be that trace. We're always going to, as long as we're here, we always have an enemy and that enemy is very good at what he does. He's very good at deception. He's very good at lies. He's the father of lies and he's always going to fight against us. And so we do have to, you know, you know, we do have to be on guard. Even when, you know, Satan tempted Jesus and, you know, Jesus used the word and but it said he left, him. you know, Satan finally left for an opportune time. So, you know, when we're weak, when we're tired, you know, recognize when we're at our weaknesses or when, you know, when we're the weakest and, you know, because that's when the enemy is going to try to get back in there when he's going to come and attack. So it's going to always be a process, but I mean, the good thing is it'll get faster of us recognizing them when we've got more in there. And it's like, uh, no, don't think so. You, you got me there once, but that was before, not now. Yeah. 
Absolutely. You know, and, and it's very interesting. You brought up the temptation of Jesus because in the second temptation, um, Satan actually tried to use God's word against Jesus, but he took it out of context and yes. Jesus threw that back at him and said, no, 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 no. Actually, was it the third temptation? Doesn't matter. That's right. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> All we know is the enemy knows the word too. Yes, he does. And so he's been around a lot longer than we have. And it's really important that we continue to study our Bible and, um, I could talk about that all day. You know, you know that I could, but continue to study our Bible and continue to learn from it because as Violet has told us, we're never going to be the perfect grown ups. that, you know, every now and then I say something like when I grow up, I want to be X, Y, Z. I'm right. 46. It's time to admit that I'm a grown up, and I, need to just, <laughs> <laughs> I will not be perfect this side of heaven. It's okay. <laughs> That's right. It's that okay. is right. <laughs> so I have a question that I like to ask everybody that I interview. What does this have to do with being a disciple of Jesus? Well, I knew you were going to ask that question. And, and we talked about this, you know, even some before and talking about the renewing of the mind. Yeah. <laughs> so I've gone back and I've really, you know, thought about, you know, thought about that because we are to go spread the gospel. We're going to go spread the good news. And, you know, we need to know that good news. We need to be living that. That good news is working within us. And the more free we are, the more free we're going to help other people be. And the more we're going to let them know that what, what freedom looks like. And so, you know, it's, it's all vitally important. It's all vitally important. Words are, our words are just so important. And the good news is, you know, we don't have to live with those lies forever. We are not a lost cause. <laughs> Jesus paid it all. He's already paid, bought and paid for our freedom, but it's still up to us to walk in that freedom and to, you know, walk in more and more of it. But we have to remember we have an enemy that doesn't want us too. And so that's why that's important. And so we will always learn and we will always grow or we have the opportunity. I guess I should say that, you know, we, it's up to us if we're going to pick up the Bible and the word and it's going to, you know, get in there and, and spend time with God, you know, spend time with God and in his presence. Sometimes I just like to just lay in his presence mm -hmm. because when it's, you know, his presence can change us as well when we're just laying in his presence. Absolutely. God's presence changes people. Yes, it does. Absolutely. I mean, how many times in the Bible do we see men were given new names just because of an interaction with Jesus or with the spirit of God? Yes. Whew, I'm getting excited. Yeah, I just got, I just got those. Uh, I don't know. Holy, Holy spirit. spirit yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And I just think about Jacob when you, I think it was Jacob in there, you know, uh, is one of those examples, you yes. know, yes. and stuff, but, uh, but yes, we will always change and words are so important. I mean, that goes all the way back to the garden. It, does. it, does. it was Satan, you know, and it was attacking, it was, uh, he was attacking God's character and God's identity and thus ours as well, because we're made in the image of God. Mm. Ooh. That's good. When he attacked God's character, he attacked ours too. Mm. Yeah. Wow. And see, Jesus, he did, he did the same thing to Jesus, but Jesus knew his identity. He knew his identity well, and he didn't let that distract him or he didn't let that get him yeah. and stuff. So, and we have to remember, you know, one of the verses I really like is the, the verse that says, you know, he did not give us the spirit of fear, but of power in love, in a sound mind. Mm -hmm. And it's there. Um, again, we just need to come along with God and really take hold of all that. I think it was Christine Kane who said, the Bible says that we have the mind of Christ. If we are saved by Jesus Christ, we have the mind of Christ. Now we just have to use it. I was yeah. like, oh, ow. <laughs> you know? 
oof, but absolutely. So Violet, if our listeners want to uh, find you online and hear more from you, where can they find you? They can find my, on my website, you can go to my website, which is www.breakingthroughthelies.com. Uh, I'm on uh, Facebook, I'm on social media, uh, I'm on Instagram, sorry. And then um, if you want to have a conversation, if you'd like to just have a call with me, you can actually go to um, www.meetwithviolet.com and just schedule you know, a schedule a free call with me. Awesome. I will make sure to put links to Violet's website, her social media and her calendar. If you would like to meet with her, I'll make sure to put all of that in the description below. So Violet, I have so much fun talking with you. Thank you for joining me. Oh, thank you for having me. I've loved it. So um, everybody check out the, uh, the description, the show notes and um, go find Violet on social media because She is fabulous. She loves her some Jesus and she is so passionate about us living in freedom. So go find her on your favorite social media, or if this is something, you know, you need help with book a call with her. So yes. All right. Talk to you soon.